everybody. It's Weird Islanders, the podcast, back once again. My name is Dan. That is Mike. Uh, how do we find you on this evening, Mike? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty excited about this uh, this Weird Islander, someone who I thought was going to get claimed you know, pretty quickly because he, he does I get mentioned quite a bit as a uh, a lot of times when we when we do players they're they have some sort of profile around the league mm-hmm. and the angle is that oh wow I can't believe that Brian Ralston was an Islander that completely you know slipped my mind that Brian Ralston mm-hmm. was an Islander or uh, you know Thomas Vanek was an Islander uh, Brian Smith was an Islander but this guy he was uh, an NHLer uh, he had a you know, decent career, but I would say his profile around the league is, I don't think anybody, this guy is, is like so far down the list in terms of <laughs> relevant, impactful NHLers, but his name comes up so often on Islanders anxiety. Uh, and he's got like a little bit of a cult status as a tongue and cheek, tongue and cheek all-star maybe mm. is a good way to put him uh, for a couple of reasons, which we'll get into. So uh, this is, this is going to be a fun episode with a, with a great guest. Yeah, this will be a lot of fun. And yeah, this player is um, sort of a poster child for, uh, well, let's just say free agency signings that uh, <laughs> may or may not have disappointed. Uh, so that that's usually the reason his name comes up. But uh, it is a great pick. And yeah. our well, is- you know what it was? His expectations were so low and he yeah. didn't come close to even. <laughs> yes, the, 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 the low bar that wasn't even cleared. We got to love that. Nothing says Islanders more than that. We do have a great guest. He is an award-winning producer, director, and podcaster who podcasts about dad life. And uh, maybe he's won an award for being a dad, too. We're going to talk to him. His name is Tyler Gilden. Tyler, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. I'm really excited. Uh, No, thank you for coming on. Uh, You are a huge Islanders fan. Uh, You've followed Mike and I for a long time. We wanted to get you on for a long time, so it's great to get you on. Um, You have uh, an extensive uh, resume in commercial uh, filmmaking and uh, short filmmaking. We'll talk about that in a second too. How do you work uh, your Islanders fandom into these things? Is there like an ethos that you follow that maybe you learn from the team or do you try and sneak the logo into the background of certain shots that maybe people haven't noticed yet? Uh, how do you carry the Islanders with you on uh, on your creative uh, projects? So that's, that's funny because I definitely... You know, one of my one of my main directors of photography is actually a big uh, Penguins fan, and that sometimes uh, will will irk me a bit because he has <laughs> on his camera he ha- sometimes uh, uh, he has a he has a Penguins sticker on it, and I'm always <laughs> like trying to move it out of the way or like <laughs> drop it down, or if I'm taking a BTS shot, I'll put like an emoji over it. Uh, but yeah, cool. I usually uh, I usually wear uh, I, I mean I, I wear a hat nine out of ten days a week, so I'm always wearing <laughs> a hat. But usually it's an Islander hat. Uh, but what I what I've been doing about two months ago, so I have I mean my life is is hard drives. You know every every shoot mm. we're on, we're we're dumping footage and and you know several terabytes. And so now I've named every hard drive uh, I have after some of my favorite Islanders. So that has been fun. So like I have like the Zygmunt Palfi, I, I have the like Sarkovsky, which I was so stoked when I yeah. saw uh, Sarkovsky was at opening night. I yeah. literally wanted to find him to show him my hard drive yeah. Rolodex and be like, dude, I literally have That's clips funny. of commercials with a drive with your name on it. And he would have just been extremely uh, weirded <laughs> out by that. But I got like, I got, you know, I have a, I have a red drive. So it's, it's the Yashin. I got, <laughs> you know, I got Bates, I got Blake. I basically, uh, I got the Mark Paris drive. So it, it's just funny because even when um, I actually dropped it off at a post-production house uh, and they were giving it back to me and they were like, Oh yeah, I have the, uh, the, they couldn't pronounce Sarkovsky. Like I have the Kazerski and Okaposo <laughs> drive for you. And I was like, I was like, those are actually players who are on the Islanders who right. I really like. And the guy was just like, Oh, I What's had no Islander? idea. I just thought, yeah, 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 exactly. What's an Islander. Right. Well, I was going to say like, has anybody ever been like, Hmm, Tchaikovsky. I've never heard of this brand of hard drive. Where is this from? Where did you get? <laughs> is this European? Well, kind of, a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's 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 a Polish hard drive. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's super. It's super loyal, and yeah. you know, it really you have a very low bar expectation, so it always exceeds yeah. it. <laughs> right, and it still looks great after all these years as well. As Mike and I talk about all the time. Uh, so your podcast, Father Material, is all about uh, you uh, and your two kids who are uh, both under four. Uh, how uh how have you kind of uh well i should say this 
like I mean, I have I'm looking at stuff right now over my desk where my of what my daughter made when she was about that age, and she wrote, "You are a true Islander," and I don't even know how she spelled Islander here. Is I L E N D E R? It's close enough, I guess, for when she's three or four. Uh, do are they conscious of how big a fan you are of this team and like you know how big a part of your life this team is as as well as them? No, they. De- I mean, my son definitely. I try and incorporate him. He went to his first game last season. Uh, this season, now there's. I mean, last season, unfortunately, there was literally I think one day game, which was yeah. absurd. So this year, there's a couple of day games, which is great. Plus, there's a. Uh, it's an evening game, but on his birthday, it's December twenty seventh. The Islanders are playing that night, so I haven't told him yet. But I'm gonna bring him, <laughs> and I'll get his. I'll, I'll get his name on the board, and we'll do all that. But yeah, oh, I mean, nice. he's got. He loves bobbleheads. You know, he's. Uh, when, you know, I'm a big Islanders, Mets, Jets guy, and I think uh, he'll probably. I mean, it's unfortunate that I'm passing this down to him. It's you know, I'm basically <laughs> giving him years of torture. But yeah, we all uh, feel like that, yeah. <laughs> as far as far as he's concerned, the Islanders are very good because think about it. You know, he's four years old and yeah. made the playoffs three out of his four years, two of which went to the Eastern Conference Finals. So like Pretty even good. like even the even the Mets, you know, two years ago they were in the wild card. This year they didn't make yeah. it, and I had to explain to him what that meant that they're not in the playoffs. No. Um, so you know. <laughs> To, to him, the Islanders are really good uh, because <laughs> for his age, they have been. That's so funny. That's great. Yeah. Well, when he that that day when he finds out, yeah, maybe they're not so good this year or ever any year, uh, will be a <laughs> uh, a huge moment for him. <laughs> well, well, hopefully, it, uh, you cover that on the podcast. That'll be a lot. Well, of fun. That, that, well, that's that's like um, we have the what is it the like uh, ABC's hockey book. Uh, yes. I have it for like every sport, and it has all the players. And finally, we read it almost uh, I don't know every other night or whatnot. And finally, he's like, Daddy. Why aren't there any Islanders in this? And like he wasn't <laughs> understanding. And then I said, "Well, it's Zendane Chara. You know, he was drafted by the Islanders, and he ended uh-huh. his career on the Islanders. So now, yeah. like Zendane Chara is now his favorite because he's in that book, and he doesn't understand why everybody else in that book is on the Montreal Canadiens or is on the Detroit <laughs> Red Wings. Like, I mean, I don't understand. You're telling me that B couldn't have been for Bossy or P couldn't have been for Potvin? Like, I, I find it hard to believe that they had a dynasty and not one of them could have fit into the alphabet. But yeah. I guess you know." I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I didn't write the book. Yeah, <laughs> comes, comes with the territory when you're an Islanders fan. But uh, yeah, I remember having. Uh, I remember uh, being in a not kind of a. It might have been a Models. I'm not even sure. My my daughter was like, "Oh, they have all this sports stuff. I don't see any Islanders stuff here." And I'm like, "Yeah, don't even bother looking for this. Stuff. You're never gonna find it here. Uh, that's just how it is with this team. You got to really. You have to know where to get it. Uh, yeah. Which is how it works. Uh, but the, uh, black, the black market. Or, yeah, yeah or the, the underground material. Yeah. <laughs> or, or or just get spammed by Isles Lab all the time on oh Instagram. I, every yeah. every other ad I get now is either like Forty Seven yeah. brand. It's, yeah. every, it's every sports brand, and like I'm the biggest sucker. I'm actually <laughs> buying so many Islander and Mets hats lately, like as if mm. they're going out of like I don't even know why. But I just every other scroll I get them, and I'm like, that's a cool one. And now oh, I'm just funny. buying a bunch of Islander and Mets hats. But I have I have some pretty cool swag. Yeah, I actually showed my wife a. Uh, an Isles Lab jacket. It was like a, it was a the new fisherman. So the dark blue, that new fisherman logo with like a button down, like sort of satin jacket, so like eighty style. And I, I was like, one. I was like, uh, it's uh, it's only one hundred and fifty dollars, which is for Isles Lab is pretty good. Like that's actually a pretty good <laughs> clearance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. Uh, I told it happens I, to be a cool piece. I, I saw that one. It happens to be it's a cool piece. I, I it's didn't, very I didn't cool. Pull trigger on it though. Yeah. No, neither did I. Maybe for Christmas we'll see. But I go to flea markets a lot, and I'm, I always tell her like. If I ever come across a vintage actual Islanders satin jacket from the 80s, I will quit going to the flea market because I will have reached the, the mountaintop. There's nothing else better than that. So forget it. But uh, we are here to talk about a guy who most definitely did not reach the mountaintop with the Islanders or any mountaintop. <laughs> with anyone. Although maybe there was one in his hometown, which we'll talk about, which uh, actually plays a big, big part in his story. Uh, and so without any further ado, Tyler Gilden, will you please reveal the subject of tonight's episode of Weird Islanders, the podcast? Hailing from Denmark, Peter Regan. <laughs> Not only Denmark, Herning, Denmark. Very important town in the history of the NHL, which we'll cover extensively. Before that, reminder that we are on Patreon, patreon.com slash Islanders Anxiety. Plans start as low as two bucks a month. You can get ad-free episodes of this show, plus bonus podcasts, discount codes, written posts, and a whole lot more. So sign up today, patreon.com slash Islanders Anxiety. Okay, we always begin, or mostly begin, with the obvious question. Out of that whole list that we showed you, why did Peter Regan jump out to you as a Weird Islander to discuss? 
I just find he's he epitomizes so much of what the Islanders offseason acquisitions have been throughout my lifetime. <laughs> you know, he's just he just he he just he's in that exact same world of the like Nikita Shashkinovs and the you know, Kunakles. I mean, he's just <laughs> he's somebody, or, or even like Nikolai Kulaman. Like he's basically someone who like we were taking a pass on because maybe he had untapped potential from somewhere else right. and has a close relationship with somebody on the team. Like that's pretty much like he was basically brought to us as, "Hey, Franz is from Denmark. This is Franz's good friend from Denmark. Mm. He must be an Islander." Like that's yep. how I felt the approach was. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that, uh, yeah, so that off season, the Islanders are coming off of that, uh, I don't want to say unlucky, but well-played six-game series loss to the Penguins. So much, uh, they built up a lot of goodwill. They made the trade, too, right after that uh, at the draft for Cal Clutterbuck. Um, they traded Niederreiter, and they brought in Clutterbuck. And you're thinking, all right, this team, like they they're going for it. They might, you know, give this give this a a real shot. Then they come into the season outside of Clutterbuck, and their acquisitions were Kevin Churchman, <laughs> NCAA free agent Kevin yeah. Churchman. Yeah, <laughs> two years, two years, two point seven million dollar entry level contract for Churchman. So hmm. good for him. Um, Pierre Marc Bouchard uh, and Peter Regan. So yeah. and and that was to to offset. Like Jesse Yo and Sue left, Brad Boys left, Keith O'Coin left. So you you have this great season. Uh the team is seemingly heading in the right direction. And this is how you consolidate it. You bring in I was excited about Pierre Marc Bouchard. I sure. will not I will definitely and I'm sure I found a way to be excited about Peter Regan, but this is this is how you're gonna kind of consolidate that great season by by bringing in these guys that's uh oh boy yeah Uh, like Uh, like we said low bar low bar i think is the theme of this this episode and it never got met yeah uh the thing that unites all those players that you mentioned was that none of them are goalies which was the big problem that year uh as we've said many times and getting a bakov in that 2013 lockout shortened season emptied his tank to get the Islanders into the playoff. And God bless him. And once I got there, he was on fumes. Maybe not even fumes. Maybe fumes of fumes, right? But by the next season, he was he was cooked. And he was the starter. But they brought him back. They couldn't get another goalie. He was the starter. I forget if that was the Chad Johnson. Pull it. Pull, it was pull, pull it and pull Nilsson. Yeah. 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 So it was the goaltending was a problem that year. Uh, and it wasn't rectified in the offseason. It wasn't rectified during the season. That was the year that the Islanders made the big trade for Thomas Vanek. I have said before, and I'll say it again, I've always maintained that Garth Snow wanted to take wanted to take Vanek and Ryan Miller, and Miller just either didn't want to come or they couldn't make the trade work. And in any event, well, they had to ride with Nabby the whole season, and it did not work out very well. But we did have Peter Regan, and we did have Pierre Mark <laughs> Bouchard. <laughs> and so Regan is, is an interesting guy because he had played with Ottawa for – uh, five years, and he had one great year. Well, one good year, I should say. Thirteen goals, twenty nine points in seventy five games. You know, he was a, he was a decent bottom of the lineup guy. I think they might have gone on a long playoff run with him, or a playoff run six games. So, like, he had this resume of being like a decent bottom of the lineup guy, but he couldn't stay healthy, and he just you know he played ten games one year, twenty seven the year just before he came over to the Islanders. But Tyler, like you said, he did have one overwhelming uh, characteristic that the Islanders simply could not ignore. And that is that he was good friends with and from the same hometown as Franz Nielsen, <laughs> who was one of the Islanders' better players. So, like, they signed this guy. You've, you've probably barely heard of him. Even if you had, you're like, oh, yeah, he's a guy who played with Ottawa. But they're signing him because he's a friend of a guy. That's his one qualification for being on this team. Friend of a guy. What is going through your mind at the time? Like, this is it? Yes. Yeah, it is a good guy. You know, this is this is our guy. You know, right. this is our our shootout guy. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I I remember literally making the joke to my friend, like, all right, so like he took he you know he, he growing up he you know he took a bath with Franz Nielsen, and now they should <laughs> they should share a locker room too. Like I, yeah. I you know like but but being the 
uh, unfortunately, uh, trying to be optimistic Islander fan was trying to convince myself that like this was going to be a diamond in the rough. Right. You know, this was going right. to be this steal. Like you know, they know something that that his stats aren't showing us, and Franz is going to unlock this. How much fun they're going to have together? I don't even think they ended up playing like too many minutes together. I I think they weren't even on the same line after like the first couple of games. Like it wasn't even working. Uh, We were like, Oh, bronze, you know, bronze is backhand. Maybe this guy will be the forehand doing his backhand. And whoa, (laughs) this is going to be like the best thing to ever happen. Uh, you know, out of Denmark. And it was just, uh, you know, uh, what do you end up playing? 44 games. (laughs) Yeah. 44 games. And, and his, uh, so, I was at the at the home opener uh, and I saw Arthur Staple in the concourse and he was talking about how he's doing the story on the fourth line with Clutterbuck and Martin at Zizekas. And uh, part of the uh, article was about if they could remember their first shift together. And because if you remember, they brought in Clutterbuck and they're like this. And, and it, it made sense at the time. Like this guy's going to be a middle sixer, maybe a second liner. Uh, him and Tavares knew each knew each other going back. Yeah, a little a little ways. Like he could have some offensive upside and 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 be the kind of banger on a you know the Kyle Palmieri type on a second or third line. Uh so Staple asked you know if he remembered and and Clutterbuck was like, no, I didn't play with them right out of the gates actually. And he, he told two two anecdotes. First of all, he's like, I I assisted on Brock Nelson's first career goal. Hmm. Uh, and then he's like, yeah, I don't know if I assisted on another one for Brock ever since. And <laughs> it's so funny yeah, to think it's probably later. true. Cause right. like, I can't, I can't even picture those two guys on the ice together. Um, mm. and then the other thing he said was that he, his first shift and his first training camp with the Islanders, his line was with his former wild teammate, Pierre, Mark Bouchard, which makes sense. And Peter Regan. So it was Peter <laughs> Regan, Pierre, Mark Bouchard and Cal Clutterbuck, uh, for as a line and i mean that is a franken line i i mean i don't even know where to begin there uh but uh yeah so he wasn't even playing with franz and i do find i think it's funny because a lot of you know nhl teams uh a good example is the season with the avalanche Mm. they brought in jonathan drewan because he's friends with nathan mckinnon and a lot of times you'll, you'll hear these stories of a a star player in in a certain market, maybe pushing for a guy to come in, in uh, be brought along. And uh, a lot of times it's like Sidney Crosby wanted this guy, whatever. And, and who knows if it's you know typical, like hockey media fan fiction or for real, but for the Islanders, the only instance I've ever heard of this was with Tavares and, and Brad boys and Franz Nielsen and Peter Regan. <laughs> which is just like those are those are the, the the friend guys that that we brought in uh to to but as as tyler said like franz was such a good guy i i they could have if if he wanted to sign you know a 38 year old dude from like the second division of the danish professional league i would have been like yeah absolutely <laughs> if it makes franz happy yeah, i'm right. fine with that yeah and and I, i'm with you tyler like i thought this guy you know i looked at his his background his, you know, kind of meth numbers. Our friend Garrick wrote a whole thing at Lighthouse Hockey about it, you know, saying like, you know, there's nothing really that's great about this guy and he's been hurt all the time, but A, he costs them nothing. And B, he knows like the guy who's, you know, one of their second best player or one of their better players. So maybe this will be the thing that unlocks him and it turns him from a, you know, decent sort of useful bottom of the lineup guy who's always hurt to maybe a middle of the lineup guy who hopefully is more healthy, right? Cause maybe, maybe if changes scenery, he gets out of Ottawa, maybe things are a little bit different. Um, you know, Sens fans were just like, yeah, this guy's always hurt, whatever. And uh, you brought up Keith, a coin before Mike. And yeah, that's like, that was a huge thing. Him leaving, you know, we're going to do an episode one day on Keith, a coin, and he's got to be one of the most violent, valuable yeah, weird Islanders that have ever been. <laughs> yeah, pound, pound for pound, right? Like, yeah, seriously. Think he played maybe thirty-eight games. I don't even know if that, but just that half yeah, the, season. The maybe. fact that that the Islander, like, there was a Keith O'Coin sized hole on right. a team that needed yeah. to be addressed is yeah, it's a big problem. Thank God it wasn't a Jesse Yoensu size hole because <laughs> I don't think Peter Regan would have filled that because Jesse was a big boy and Peter Regan yeah. was definitely not. But um, but Dom had an article at Lighthouse Hockey and and Regan even said there's been talk of me playing second line role for the past two years. I've run into some bad luck every time. 
I've got the opportunity, and sometimes I haven't produced when I've gotten the chance. So it's not just injuries. I feel like I have decent skill to play on the second or third line and be secondhand scoring. And I was like, okay, yeah, maybe this is the guy. Play with your buddy, see what happens. But yeah, didn't uh, didn't really work out that way. Uh, there was a cool interview I found, though, with Nielsen and Regan talking about how excited they were to play for the Islanders. Friends, uh, welcoming Peter to the Islanders must have been a great feeling. Uh, what kind of advice have you offered in order to ease Peter's arrival on the island? Uh, not that many yet. I mean, he's going to fit in just fine here. Uh, you know, I know how talented he is. He's going to you know, he's gonna be perfect for the kind of game we're playing there, the system we have. So, you know, I mean, of course, I told him it's we got some great guys in the room there, and you know, it's a lot of fun. And you know, he's gonna he's gonna be just fine when he gets there. And uh, Peter talks between various teams, and and your agent started on July 3rd, and your contract was uh, signed with the Islanders on the 4th. Uh, that was pretty fast, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was signed on the 5th when, when free agency opened. Uh, I, I, talked to, uh, I talked to them on, on the 4th, actually, the first time, and uh, we had a good talk, and, and my, my agent called me on the 5th uh, just before, the, uh, before it opened and um, said that we had to uh, make a quick decision, that they came up with an offer, and I said, well, let, let's take it right away. I, that, that was my first priority. Uh, number one priority to go there uh, even before free agency started I talked to France a little bit and and that was uh, I think it's it's a good fit for me coming uh, coming back from a couple of tough years to to get a chance and and hopefully get a good chance at at getting some ice time and and uh, playing for a good team who's uh, who's up and coming so so I'm really looking forward uh, to it and and I'm excited about the opportunity but it's funny because like you said they didn't really play on a line together but uh Three games into his Islanders career, he scores his first goal as an Islander. It was against the Coyotes in a 6-1 win. And it was a nice goal. He, he made it look really easy. Like, he just sort of strided in and, and scored. You know, there's, nobody pats you on the back all that often just because you're checked. But it's very rewarding. And, and you've heard the expression, defense wins championships. Here's Regan for the Islanders. Closing and shooting. He scores! His first goal, his first point is a New York Islander, Peter Regan. Gives the Islanders a one to nothing lead. Get another turnover by the Coyotes just inside the blue line. And Peter Regan and Bouchard have a quick opportunity on the two on one. Again, there's Larson, kind of a, not a very good pass off of Mahala. And Regan takes a look and then decides I haven't anything else to do. So he goes high on the glove side. Great opportunity for the Islanders. And watch Bouchard, he falls, but he gets up, goes to the net. And Look how deep Mike Smith is in his net, and that's the smart thing to do. When you see a goalie that deep, get the pie up high, even though he's a big goaltender, super shot by Peter Regan. I mean, Tyler, do you have any recollection of this goal or this game whatsoever? Because I was watching, I'm like, damn, no wonder I was excited about this guy. He made this look really, really easy. He just strode in and scored. It was pretty cool. Yeah, no, I... I looked. I looked up. The, I you know, I watched the goal. Also, I honestly, I, I don't remember. I really don't remember much <laughs> from him at all because he really was a non-factor. I mean, he was yes. just more of. I mean, when I think about him, I mean, I'm looking now. The fact that after that season, and and yeah, they lost to the Penguins in the playoffs, and and mm. but but there was a lot of heart, and you felt yeah. like we were going to take the next step, and you were all mm. excited, and that their acquisitions, you know, of of, of Pierre Marc Bouchard and Peter Regan combined for six goals like they combined <laughs> for six goals like i mean what kind of off season is that like we're, we're trying to take the next step here yeah. we're trying to come back to the playoffs and your off season acquisitions combined yeah. for yep. six goals and i'm sure we'll get to it in a bit but my favorite part is then they both got traded together to chicago yeah, so was like, yeah. yeah this didn't work this is a package deal this is the <laughs> this didn't work off season acquisition you could just have them. like i just think that's that is, there will always be synonymous honestly this episode should almost be both of them because like mm. i know we keep it's him and franz are a, a pair but to me like him and pierre marc bouchard are also like a pair yeah. because it was just like this we didn't even try this year. Like we didn't even try to capitalize on the previous yeah, right. year. Like that yeah. was our off season. Well, yeah. I think this was this was Garth's um, kind of his mo was that uh, he would 
maybe get too cute one off season because mm. the the, yeah. the off season previous this one was good. He, the the boy signing was good. Um, kind of yeah. just made like the right moves, advancing players like like Olstrom and uh, even like someone like Colin McDonald. And you know, for as much of a joke as Brian Strait became, he was important to that team. I mean, he uh, signed boys and a coin. Like those two yeah, guys O'Coin, were instrumental that uh, year. Yeah, brought in Lubo. Like right. that was a great off season for Snow. And then he has a terrible one in this, um, <laughs> this off season with the 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 Peter Regan Pierre Marc mm. Bouchard off season, and then the ne- the following one was was Halak and right. Letty and Boychuk. So it was probably his best one ever. Grabowski uh, and Kuhlman that year too. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Just like a uh, maybe one of the best off seasons pound for pound that any GMs mm. had in the cap era um (laughs) but yeah like he he kind of got we would get too cute and that was always his problem like when when he would make bad moves it was because he thought that his ability to to unearth the the keith o'coins or uh matt molson's like he could just do that and every time he found a guy exactly yeah yeah, exactly a dive into the rough (laughs) it was like pierre Pierre, mark bouchard and peter regan were just gonna walk in and and i guess we were kind of convinced like those mm. two guys, Marty Reason, are like, oh yeah, they're gonna walk in here and just they're just gonna contribute fifteen goals because anytime Garth gets a guy like this, they just be they play over their head or or over their expectations. And yeah, no, these two guys not only not only just uh, like the the what like six goals between them, uh, two for Regan and four for Bouchard, but sixteen points like. <laughs> Between two two guys who are supposed to, I mean, and Bouchard had a really good NHL career. Like he was yes. a good player. Um, so between two guys that should have slept walked to twenty mm. points, uh, th- this was. I mean, it's ho- it's really really hard to be a cataclysmic failure when <laughs> you were signed to like a one year veteran minimum deal. Right. But Peter Regan, his Islander tenure somehow. Uh, mm found found its way to doing that although yeah. it must be noted uh he is one of the adventureland all-stars because if you go yes. to his wikipedia page <laughs> not only do they have the picture of him but it's got a caption he's wearing a yankee hat he's got the sunglasses on the bill and it says regan in october 2013 with the new york islanders at adventureland that's incredible, <laughs> that <is> incredible. <laughs> that's incredible I mean, if you were stood on the line to meet Peter Regan at Adventureland <laughs> in the summer of 2013, uh, you're a better fan than we are. I can tell you that right now. But, uh, but yeah, so he, you know, you're right, Tyler. Like this guy, I'm looking at his numbers. So he ends up with, uh, and again, 44 games. We'll talk about the end in a second. 44 games, two goals, five assists, seven points, right? Now that is, a, a, in, in 44 games, you had seven points. That's nothing. Uh, as easy as he made it look, in scoring that first goal three games into the season in October, he wouldn't get another one until January. <laughs> like he would go months before getting another goal. And so he's one of the few guys we've talked about on this show that we have all of their Islanders goals uh, captured for posterity on YouTube. And so his other goal was against, I want to say, yeah, it was Dallas. In by Nielsen. Yeah, great play there by Thomas Hickey. He went the face-off back there. A lot of times his time and space down the side of the boards towards the net. Thomas Hickey took advantage of it. Here's Bailey shooting it off the leg. Gets in the game. Put it out in front. Regan scores! And the Islanders lead it 3-2. to two. Well, there's a happy camper. Peter Regan hasn't scored in I don't know how long. Now. Way back in Phoenix in the first week. So he's been... Trying to find ways to get get goals. He's been begging, would steal one if he could, but he's continued to work hard. That's one thing I will say about Peter Regan. You know, playing the fourth line or the third line doesn't matter. He's continued to work hard, but this is a great play by John Bayless. He stays with him. Again, he keeps the feet moving and is able to lay a perfect pass on Regan, who gets into the opening. We talked about a couple of guys, you know, getting some offense done. Bailey happy for Regan. And again, watch Josh Bailey as he keeps himself moving, and Regan right at the perfect position. So big goal for the Islanders. October the 8th. Last time Regan had scored 33 games. And uh, I don't know, he must, I don't know if relief even makes sense because at that point, like, he's got to know, man, I, I, I can't, they're probably not going to keep me on this team. It's crazy. But it's just funny to me that he went from, from scoring a goal 
on uh, October 8th. And then he scored, he didn't score again until January 6th. <laughs> like That's a long, what, three full months. Well, scoring goal. But not only that, it's one thing to have like a bad scoring season, but he was a minus 10, which, you know, okay, fine. It's a bad stat, but like that just shows that you, you know, we're on the ice for 10 goals against basically or more. And he only had 18 penalty minutes. So like, what was he doing out there? Like, I don't even know. <laughs> what, what, doing? what was he doing? <laughs> right. What are you doing? This whole line well, as, is like, what are you as doing? As Tyler out there? said, like, he's got no memory of him playing. Right. Maybe he just did it. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. But somehow he averaged 12 minutes a game. That's it. For 12 minutes, he just didn't do anything. It's just so funny. When I asked this question, like, do you remember? I never expect people to have an answer because I wouldn't remember. And this guy is definitely. One of the least memorable Islanders we've ever had, aside from his story of coming here. Because, again, he was, they were from the same hometown, which is kind of a crazy thing that this hometown produced, Herning, Denmark has produced five NHL players. And there's a movie about it uh, called The Hockey Miracle in the Middle of Nowhere. You can actually rent on Apple TV. Uh, And it talks, and Peter Regan is in there. And I wonder if he, uh, he talks about his Islanders tenure. So, it's, so, yeah, it's a, it's a very quick portion of the, uh, of the documentary, I would assume. <laughs> Ended up on the, maybe on the cutting room floor. So 44 games. All right. So well, let's actually, we'll, we'll work in Bouchard, although uh, we reserve the right to do an episode on Bouchard alone. But Bouchard was eventually sent to Bridgeport after 28 games because they, they had to, I guess, send a message. And he was the message <laughs> guy, right? So he ended up going down to Bridgeport. But Regan was here the whole time. Probably, again, stop us if you heard this before. He's friends with Franz Nielsen. So he ain't going to Bridgeport. He's staying. But after 44 games, season's going nowhere. Vanek is trying to, he's trying to sign Vanek. That's a whole disaster. We did a whole episode on Thomas Vanek. Garth Snow decides to pull the trigger on Peter Regan and pull the shoot on this whole experiment. So he decides to trade Peter Regan and Pierre-Marc Bouchard to the Chicago Blackhawks for a fourth round draft pick. Now, before we go any further... Tyler, you had no idea what was going to happen to this draft pick when you picked Peter Regan. Is that true? It is entirely true. You have, you have, you have done your research here, and, and you, you have wowed me. So please wow the people yeah. at, at how impactful, uh, especially in, in, in the, the, the state of New York, how yep. impactful ultimately this, this trade ended up becoming. It's, yeah. it's haunting. Like it's it's, a, if, if, if you want to stop listening now, <laughs> I don't blame you. It's not good. Well, as I always say, here at Weird Islanders, the podcast, we spare no expense to bring you only the best. And so I found this out, too. I, and we started talking about this. I was like, I can't believe this. So that fourth round pick. Now, the Peter Regan ended up going into the playoffs with the Blackhawks that year. And the Islanders got a fourth round pick. Now, some of you may remember that that fourth round pick was traded to Washington for the rights to a man Mike mentioned before, Yaroslav Halak, who ended up signing with the Islanders. That, that was a snow gambit that actually worked. You know, he traded for Halak's rights, signed him, and Yarrow provided the Islanders with pretty solid goaltending for a couple of seasons. That pick that the Caps got for Halak, they ended up trading to the Rangers in a swap for a third round pick at the draft. So the Rangers had this Caps fourth round pick. This is, this is the bad part, so brace yourself. The Rangers in the 2014 draft used that fourth round pick to take a young goaltender out of Russia named Igor Shesterkin. And no, I'm not kidding you. (laughs) This is documented. You could look this up. Somehow, one 44-game season of Peter Regan, and I guess 28 games of Pierre-Marc Bouchard, ended up with the Rangers drafting Igor Shesterkin, their Vezina Trophy-winning starting goaltender. Nothing's more Islanders than that, is it? You you got it, pal. There's... (laughs) That's, I just, that is mind boggling. That is absolutely mind boggling. I knew we were going to talk about this, but just hearing you go <laughs> step by step, like I, I have a pit, I just have a pit in my stomach. It's, it's. I've been laughing about this that, for two days. Like, yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> I was just about to say, I'm something that I'm going to wake up tomorrow. And you know how sometimes you just wake up and you're, you're just in a bad mood or you're grumpy or you're pissed off right. and you have no idea why. Yeah. It's going to be because of this. Like, it's so hard. It's going to be, it, it's so hard to to come to grips with this right it, it, it'd be so hard to, you, you need to buy like a six pack uh mm. to a th- like to a, a specific ty- kind of therapist <laughs> and when, when they say where do you you know where do you want to start and you say okay well i'm gonna start uh in the summer of 
2013. <laughs> the Islanders had a great the Islanders had a great season, and I'm also right. going to tell you where we end and where we end is present day. Mm. Um, and you, you talk you're going to be talking about how dismal Peter Regan's Islander career was, how unforget <laughs> like dismal isn't even the right word. It was just completely unremarkable, and yeah. <laughs> how that unremarkable signing ends up giving the Rangers their second generational goalie in as many generations. <laughs> it, it's absurd. So like we're sitting here talking about this sort of goofball signing that, you know, Oh, it's funny. This guy was friends with Franz Nielsen, but like Tyler, does this completely reach color the, this entire Peter Regan history for you? Like we talk about, you know, the, the, uh, the Tavares goal in, uh, the Islanders, I should say, winning the that playoff series against the Panthers has gotten completely recolored since John Tavares walked away. This has to completely change how you feel about Peter Regan, right? Knowing that this man ended up getting traded for the pick that used on a goalie that is still haunting the Islanders to this day. That's absurd because it has for me. I'm like, I can't even look at this guy now. I don't even know what to deal what to do with this. Tot- I mean, if we should have never traded Peter Regan. We should have kept him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it's clear we should have kept this guy. This guy yeah. should have been on the team. Uh, he should still be on the team. We should have kept him uh, forever. How did we ever right. get rid of this guy? We would have known know. we were trading him. What would it turn into? I mean, come on, Garth. You should. I mean, he only played forty-four games. He deserved the rest of the yeah. season. <laughs> that is one thing I'm pretty sure we've never heard on this show before. I, like, oh, you should have kept him. <laughs> I'm so mad. Yeah, about this. like this is this is. I, there were there was a a, a thing that happened uh, during the Rangers run to the Eastern Conference final uh where Andrew Gross just completely yeah. jinxed the the Penguins and reverse jinxed I- Igor Shesterkin on there and I, and I am still to this day like <laughs> unreasonably mad at Andrew Gross for it uh and now I'm just unreasonably mad at and 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 it's not like his doing that had anything to do with the Rangers doing that but now I feel the same way now towards Gar Snow and if I ever had to explain it to him, just like to Andrew Gross, I'd it I I would look psychotic. I'd be like, oh, I oh why are you why are you being such a you know a a, a douche to me? I'd be like, well, you traded Peter Regan and Pierre Marc Bouchard for a fourth round pick that eventually turned into Igor Shosturkin. <laughs> like you didn't even need to sign these guys. Yeah. If you had just not signed them, right, we would have been fine. We nothing you no know, like this is not a you could have given Washington a different fourth round pick. Maybe a year later, for for Yara, like I'm I'm so mad about this. It it the fact that he his career was so unremarkable is what's really right getting me. And it's not that I'm mad that he didn't play well. I'm mad that that nothingness mm. blossomed into the Rangers having one of the best goalies in the world. Yeah, like yeah, it, it's so it, hard to explain. It's almost it's almost like it should be one of the like when they do like the worst uh, New York, worst signings in New York. And honestly, right. like this is probably worse than Andrew Ladd at this point. Like he's just <laughs> like, like I really think so. I think well, so. yeah, because yeah. like Ladd was just here and then gone, and like you know he did what he whatever he did or didn't like, do. But on he the cost ice. a lot. Of, he, he cost a lot of money, and he also was after a big playoff win. Yep. We were trying to take the next step, and you know yeah. he fell on his face. Garth was not very good at capitalizing, by the way. After playoff, <laughs> you know the the occasional playoff, uh, you know series, he was not very good at capitalizing the next offseason. Right. The one time they made the playoffs back to back years was fifteen, and then sixteen. Obviously, they won the the that round. But like the big thing was Thomas Grice, and he's he's again. You talk about guys that work. He's one that worked. I remember signing him and being like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of him, maybe." And he ends up by the end of the season, he's like the starting goalie, and he's friggin' he's a brick wall against the Panthers. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> but it was like, oh yeah, okay. At first, it was like, yeah, I guess so. But then he ends up, you know, becoming this uh, sort of you know part of Islanders history. This is a whole other thing. And again, this is just, again, folks, I'm not making this up. Go look it up. This is my, I didn't even know that that, I remember the, the pick going to the caps for Halak and thinking at the time, like, Oh, actually. Okay. Well, you know what? That's a way to make, you know, chicken salad, out of chicken shit, I guess. Right. Like, you know, these, these two guys <laughs> bombed, but at least you got a good starting yeah. goalie out of it. But now this ruins that too. <laughs> yeah. It ruins everything. <laughs> ruins everything. It's insane. Oh my God. Anyway. Peter Regan. Uh, so he played 17 games for Chicago that year. He played a couple the next year. He played mostly in uh, in Rockford. 
uh, after that. And then he signed with Jokerit of the KHL. And he's he was there from 2015-16 to 2020-21. So a number of seasons there. And, and again, he was a mostly useful player. And then he was hurt. And then he was okay. And then he was hurt. Uh, and then he played a year in the Swiss League. And then he played for the Berlin Polar Bears, who... Weren't we just talking about the Berlin Polar Bears? <laughs> Somebody, what's that? How were we just talking about? I don't know. We, no, we were talking about uh, the Easter Lone Roosters. Uh, yes. Because that's, okay. that's where Michael Del Cole is. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, after, there you go. After he only scored like four right. goals in like 60 games for for TPS in Liga. <laughs> so so his uh, his scoring issues have followed him across yeah. the pond. So And Peter Regan is there now. He's uh, way down in the uh, depth chart. He only has eight points this year. But uh, yeah, so maybe maybe Del Cole and Regan have crossed paths in uh, in the German league. How about that? That's, a, that's incredible that he's still playing. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's yeah uh, he's and that that team has a an awesome logo. Yeah, that that just like it looks like the the polar bear is kind of just drawn on by mm. like a pencil or something. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that uh, yeah, I remember uh, Trish uh, Tristan, who's a, an overseas listener from England tweeted at us uh during the world championships a couple years ago that great britain was playing denmark and uh peter regan had like a hat trick or something against them <laughs> and uh so uh yeah, yeah he's, he's still got it i guess he's still I, still got it um he's still got something I never you, gonna think, you, think, him. you think him and him and him and franz are still constantly hanging out you think that's still a still a thing franz is the assistant coach on that team yeah, yeah i'm I, sure i I'm mean sure. There. Let's see. I don't know. Well, well, Franz. Remember, Franz was in the NHL only a couple of years ago, so I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, he's with Seattle still... now. He's got. He's with Jeff Tambellini. Right. <laughs> that's right. And Jeff Tambellini are like running the player yeah. development for the, the Kraken. <laughs> I'm sure incredible. that once 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 Regan decides to hang up the skates, he'll he'll yeah he'll join the Kraken and I, all the geniuses in that that uh front office. I'm sure they have a group chat, much like Mike and I have a group chat, which is like, can you believe this guy's playing for the. Berlin polar bears of the German <laughs> league. <laughs> but yeah, so he's he was playing up to this season. He's 37. So hey, you know what? Uh even though he did absolutely nothing as an Islander and his trade ended up giving the Islanders a nemesis uh for although in fairness, we should mention that Igor Shesterkin is best friends. He, this whole episode has been about Guys who are friends with guys. Yes. So it should be noted that Igor Shesterkin, although he plays for the Hated Rangers, is best buds with our best bud, Ilya Sorok. So I guess maybe he's not that bad a guy, even though we all hate him. And he wouldn't be here if not for Peter goddamn Regan. Oh God. <laughs> this whole stupid thing. But it's it's pretty amazing. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what, what else is there to say about Peter Regan's 40? Oh, that was the other surprising thing. This dude played 44 games. I thought it was way less than that. I I thought this trade happened maybe 30 games into the season. I didn't realize that uh, I, I a season rem- with this guy. <laughs> I remember Bouchard getting sent down and being yes. like, what what the hell is Pierre Marc Bouchard gonna do in Bridgeport? Like, <laughs> right. like that like in the AHL, this guy like like we said, as a had a decent NHL career is probably coming to the Islanders as a hmm. you know, a, a like a Brad Boyce type move and it just flopped so miserably, and and mm. he got stapled. Pierre Marc Bouchard's NHL career ended with him being stapled to the hip of Peter Regan, basically. Like <laughs> this is yeah. it's it's this right. is it's not Shakespearean because mm. in, in in Shakespeare plays stuff happens, right? Like the middle is <laughs> there's stuff happening in the middle. Yeah, yeah there's no there is no synopsis here. There is there is yeah. nothing. There's no <laughs> there's just yeah, yeah. there's just a, no turbulence. Just, uh, nothing happens. Yeah. Where's the yeah, plot? Yeah, it's just a Where bad ending. Yeah. What's what, what I don't know what like a tragic there's just a tragic ending here where right. the bad guys win. Nothing happens, <laughs> the bad guys win. That's what yeah. happened here. I just imagine these two guys who I'm assuming did not know each other at all before coming to the Islanders on a plane to Chicago, looking at each other like, can you believe what has happened to us <laughs> in these last <laughs> few months? Like you said, we're now tied together. And I think they probably subconsciously understood that, that 
we are forever tied together on hockeyreference.com, you know, like we're, and, but like, we didn't know, they didn't know each other. They're two, you know, one guy's you know, French Canadian guy. Another guy's from Denmark. They, one guy is from minute played in Minnesota. The other guy played in Ottawa. Like they didn't know each other at all. And now they're, they are forever linked in the history of this, this one season of this very strange team. It's, it's absurd. And uh, yeah. What's, I don't what's even... crazy is looking at, looking at how many current Islanders were on that team. I mean, that's another thing about the Islanders. I, and and yeah. I, would, I would put this up against any other team, and I, I could be <laughs> wrong, but I don't think I am. There's no way any other team currently has as many players on the <laughs> roster now as they had in 2013, 2014. Yeah. Like, it's uh, actually insane. Like, so yeah. you go, you got Brock Nelson was on that roster. Cal Clutterbuck was on that roster. Sezikis was on that roster. Martin was on that roster. Lee was on that roster. Uh, yeah. So that's five. Scott Mayfield was on that roster for a bit. That's mm. six guys. Uh, you had uh, you had Pulak in the minors. I'm going to call that seven. And right. then you have well, Th- Bailey. Th- yep. You have, Th- you have Bailey, who pretty much almost, you could say Bailey. You have Thomas Hickey, who's now MSG. I, mean, I just feel <laughs> like the amount of guys still connect. It's crazy. What other yeah. team can you tell me has legitimately six players still on their team from a decade ago? Yeah, it's no, it's crazy. Th- it's we, crazy. This, is a, this is a common theme, I think, with this this iteration of the Islanders and mm. people will say, Oh, what about the Kings? Like Drew Doughty, Andre Kopitar. And be like, okay. And yeah, and that's two. Right. <laughs> that's two. And, and by the way, those guys want three Stanley cups and are whole probably hall of famers. Like we're, we're talking Scott Mayfield's here. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're, talk, yeah. we're talking about our fourth line. The fourth line. Yeah. Is literally yeah. A decade yeah. ago. Yeah. A decade yeah. ago. It's insane. I, you know, yeah. I, you know how I've long they've been there. And then when you, like when you look at the numbers and you literally look at this is the 2023, 20, mm. 2020, you know, 2013, 2014 roster. I can easily slip up and think that says 2023, 2024. Right. And it doesn't. <laughs> that's that's so insane. Yeah. Right. No, but it's, I, it's and you know that brings up a good thing, a good point. Like, I would love to ask what Anders Lee thinks about Peter Regan. <laughs> or, yeah, not that I think that they're gonna like trash them or anything, but like, I wonder what his take on this is. Like, yeah, they were nice guys, but man, they were a little lost. Or like, I don't even know. Maybe they were hurt. Like, I don't even know. But like, uh, like I he just... probably has a, an opinion on Bouchard. Like, he's a Minnesota guy. Bouchard right. is probably yeah. a, he probably watched him play a lot. Like, sure. Now he's playing with them. And then all well, of a sudden, Clutterbuck gets, definitely played with yeah, Clutterbuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it it is this taking this season's roster and then just looking at uh the the twenty thirteen fourteen roster. And I I want I really want to sit down with with these with people in the media and just say <laughs> I just want you to look at these names and then look at this <laughs> these this roster. Co- right. I'm going to cover up the years. I'm going to say, what year do you think that is? There's six mm. Islanders on this team that are still on the team. Like, what year do you think that is? They'll probably say, like, I don't know, 2017? 100%. No, they would say that. They say 2017, 2018. Nobody, <laughs> yeah. nobody would say, yeah. can, we, can we do the research? I feel like you could do the research here, Mike. Like, I, I really yeah. want to know, is there any other team that has this many guys a I, decade ago still I on their know. roster? No, no way. Back, back of the napkin math, like, I, I would say it's not even close. Like, the yeah. Kings and the Lightning – would be the well, I was going to say, uh, like Ovechkin, Backstrom, Carlson, Carlson maybe at Alsner. So, yeah, but I don't even know if they go back that far. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, they do. Say, like, and then Alsner, Crosby, Crosby Crosby, Crosby, I like you know, say, you know, yeah, yeah Crosby, Malkin, with... Latang. Yeah. Right. That's but three. The rest of them, yeah. I mean, there's nobody else. <laughs> like, like, it's like you get, and, and, the, and once again, read, think about the names you just listed. Like yeah, every right, one of those famous. guys yeah, are, exactly. are right. all yeah, you, you would never let those guys right. You would never let those guys go, and they've all won cups. Everybody we've yeah, named yeah, has won, won, won a cup, <laughs> except our guys. Exactly. Uh, oh man, I hadn't even thought about that. Holy crap! Wow. Just think about it. It's, it's like it's 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 so funny because it, I don't even know how to describe it. But basically, the reason they get guys like Pierre Marc Bouchard. And Peter Regan is because they down just can never get free agents. They just can never right. get them, but then they can never get them to leave. Like, why is it? It's just, it's so thing. ironic <laughs> that, that, yep. that nobody wants to come, but when they come, nobody wants to leave. Like, why doesn't that point out? Like, why don't free agents realize that? Like, Oh, look at this roster. These guys have been there for a decade. They're happy. Or maybe they're just like, mm. these guys are complacent. I don't know. That is the, the forever paradox of the New York Islanders is that nobody wants to come. And then they never want to leave. And this has been yeah. going on for 51 years. Like, you know, I mean, Juju ran and, and JP Parisi didn't want to come here when they got traded. And then they didn't want to leave. They cried when they left. Al Arbor didn't want to come here. And then he was the coach forever. 
<laughs> and is yep. in the rafters. So it's just it's so funny that that this continues to happen to this day. And you could just throw Peter Regan on the list. I mean, just, he shouldn't just, be on a list with Al Arbor, but he kind of is <laughs> in, a, in a really strange way. It's very yeah. strange. So uh, uh, this has been so much fun. And Tyler, it's been so great to have you on uh, again. Your your portfolio at Gildan Media is is incredible. You've got uh, films and documentaries and commercials. Uh, your movie, The Starfish, is available on Amazon. Is that true? Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's on uh, Apple TV. Uh, yeah, no. It's, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you guys having me on because I really enjoyed the podcast. I've told you guys I'm, I'm big fans, and yeah. I listen to. You know, I I think Mike, we must be. I think we're probably about the exact same age because like we have the same same experience in terms of you know. I think I think I think I think Dan, you're a little older than we are. So yes. I'm I'm I'm, I'm 33. Yeah, yeah, same age. Okay, so I am I significantly like, older than you. <laughs> so, 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 so sorry. <laughs> so, so we we have the same exact experience. So a lot of times, I just I laugh at the things that you're saying and and what mm. was important to you, and because I'm I'm so similar because I have the exact same viewpoint. Uh, and uh, maybe I'm not as extreme as you, uh, but I definitely have my moments where I'm also <laughs> like, why am I doing this to myself? But then I can't stop doing it to myself. Uh, and, and maybe it's just something about the time that we were born. Maybe there's something about that 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 mm. era of right after, you know, a few, a few years removed from the dynasty. And, and I don't know, in those just dreadful 90s, maybe be a kid in the 90s watching this mm. team. It did something to us. I don't know. I, yeah, I think it's it definitely did. And and, and yeah, it's 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 that that we're the part of a the generation of fans that just we don't have any emotional connection to the dynasty like we we right. it's like rep yeah, yeah sure we yeah. we have yeah. reverence and and we understand like how incredible it was but we just we weren't around and and we were also a little bit we're like six years seven years afterwards so it's not even like our older brothers or whatever were around either like there's just a gap mm. so it's hard to fathom and we're left with uh Peter Regans and, and, and Pierre Marc Bouchards <laughs> and Mark Lawrence's and stuff like that. That's, that's yeah, but these guys become uh, these folk, these folk heroes, you know, that's why yeah. I got Mar- yep. Mary Sarkovsky, my favorite player. Like why is Mary Sarkovsky my favorite player? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how many hard diehard hockey fans is, is you know, what a guy like Mary Sarkovsky, you know, a, right. pretty much what a, a B level player. And like, that's my favorite guy. I named my hard drive after like, what the hell? I mean, yeah. hey, listen, that guy had a run of two or three seasons where he was like one of the he was the best player we saw. Like that was just amazing. It was post Palfi, pre Pekka, and there was Tchaikovsky. And he was dynamite. He was the best player on probably the worst team ever iced. But that was <laughs> however old you were at the time, that's the time that you got you got grabbed. And you know, you could do a lot worse than Tchaikovsky. Don't let, don't sell yourself short. That guy, or him. He was, he was a good player. No, yeah, no, he, I mean, listen, I'm looking at his stats now. I mean, the most he ever had was 70 points in a season, which is, is, is pretty, is pretty good. But I mean, right. you know, when you talk about some of, you know, I'm sure we all have friends who their players were these great players and yeah. we just didn't have those. Like after Palfi, Tchaikovsky or like Jason Blake, you know, which was like right. the epitome of an Islander fan was like, you know, Jason Blake, the little engine that could, who you know <laughs> defied all odds. And then like, he had the weirdest like mm. falling out with the Islanders. And like, now I don't even know how I feel about Jason Blake, but he's one of my hard drives. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But you know, I mean, the, it's, it is funny that we have now reached a place where, the dynasty doesn't loom as large, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's just time or the fact that the team has been good again, you know, for a number of years, cause it, it loomed large back then too. But I feel like, you know, f- for me, and I've talked about a lot, Mark Stride is one of my favorite Islanders of all time. And like to say that feels a little bit weird. Cause I mean, to me, I almost feel like he should still be playing. Like he's still a young man, right? I mean, he's probably younger than me. Like he should still be playing, but uh, it feels weird to kind of throw, throw him in with guys like, you know, Pat LaFontaine, who was my my all time favorite Islander. So, uh, you know, it's it's good that time has marched on and we have moved on and, and you, we can have different favorite players. But I mean, I I applaud you and I admire you that you've held on to your Tchaikovsky fandom this whole time. The man was an NHL all star. So, you know, if, if and it's, there's somebody out there. Scott Lachance is his favorite ho- hockey player, too. And he was an, also an <laughs> NHL all star. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so your podcast father material. Uh, it's again about you, uh, you know, helping raise your kids. Uh, is that coming back uh, soon? Because uh, I mean, I I, I want to check it out again. You had Jeff Merrick on. That's that's more than we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, no, Jeff. Uh, I had Jeff on. Yeah, I'm actually uh, in the process of uh, about to oh, gear up. I just have kind of 
Uh, listen, I, I, I admire your guys' dedication to the podcast. You guys do a, a phenomenal <laughs> year round and, and have found ways to branch off. And maybe it's the fact that there's two of you guys. Maybe that, that, that makes it, uh, <laughs> yeah, makes it easier. Uh, yes. But either way, yeah, no, I do want to bring it back. And, and yeah, I mean, to me, uh, you know, having, you know, two, two young kids and uh, I started during the pandemic and uh, I just felt like so much of what I do uh, and, and whether it was, you know, a, a lot of what I used to do, not as much anymore, is, is, mm. is stand up uh, and just writing and producing was just weird hours uh, yeah. all the time. And then just to have kids, which is also weird hours for things. And it's just like, yeah. how do you balance all of that? Because, you know, when you're a creative person and I'm, I'm sure, you know, you guys can attest to this with with, uh, you know, Islander's anxiety of like this being kind of your baby. So how do you balance your baby with actual living, breathing human babies? Uh, so that was kind of the whole impetus for, for the podcast is just that, you know, how do you, how do you balance uh, the two worlds? So it's, it's been, it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I had a lot of really uh, great conversations uh, with a, a lot of different folks uh, from different scopes of, uh, you know, the creative realm of just, you know, the different ways, whether it's time management or it's just uh, how uh, their influence, like I feel becoming a dad, I am a much more empathetic human being. And I, I just, you know, when naturally I look at things and I don't look at it just from a, you know, uh, from an Islander fan lens. I, you know, I look at it also from like a dad lens and just how that impacts the type of creative endeavors and projects you want to do, because now you feel like, oh shit, some, you know, one day my kid's going to see this. So I want to put something yep. out there that's actually important into the world versus just, you know, some, uh, you know, slapdick something. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's, it's, I mean, uh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's been fun and, uh, yeah, I definitely, yeah. uh, plan to do more. Yeah. Oh, great. I can't wait. Uh, you should, everybody should check it out it's at fathermaterial.com. Uh, you can find it on Apple podcast, Spotify, all that stuff. And, uh, no, I love to hear that. And, and yeah, I definitely, I definitely can, can em empathize with that. And I, you know, I've said pe to people, I feel a hundred times more comfortable as myself as a husband and a father than I ever was as a single man. Sorry to tell that to all the single men out there. Uh, I hated it. I hated it every minute of it. And I wanted it to end. And I am going to forever be grateful for my wife and my daughter for letting me be me. And, you know, I am sitting in a room right now, literally covered wall to wall in action figures and Islander shit. And that they th are cool with that because that's who I am, right? So like, you know, if I love Spider-Man, and the Golden Girls and the Islanders and the Beastie Boys, that's all me. And and it's nice to be that and be what I want to be as opposed to when you're young, when you're single and and unattached and you think you have to be somebody else because <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to to be out there and, you know, kind of attract uh, somebody. Just be yourself. That's that's my my advice. Uh, and uh, no, I won't be starting a podcast for that stuff, too. But uh, this has been great. And where can everybody <laughs> find you on Twitter? Also, Tyler, let everybody know. Just uh, at Tyler Gildon, T Y L E R G I L D I N. I only spell it out because everyone thinks it's G I L D E N. It is yes. not. It is an <laughs> I. There are two eyes on your face. There are two eyes in my name. Get it right. I've uh, been correcting people. I've got many awards throughout my life. I don't have that many awards. But I've, I've gotten things written with the wrong uh, spelling. Even my kids have brought home. My, my kid once brought home spelling his own name uh, at school and spelled his last name wrong. And I'm like, what is this teacher doing? Like, you, you just completely set my kid up to fail there. Uh, but yeah, funny. it's okay. I, I, I respond either way. And actually, if you... Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you type in Gildan Media, G I L D E N dot com, I bought that and it links to <laughs> Gildan Media with two eyes. Smart. So I'm on top nice. of it. All right. I'm thinking nice. about these things. You are a very creative person. I like that. That's very good. <laughs> I, I would if I had a if I had to buy every uh podcast domain of my name being misspelled, I would be broke. So there you go. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, yeah but, I'm probably <laughs> preaching to the wrong person. Yeah, I, I, I understand that now. I take it back. Yeah. I take it back. No, no, no. I hear you. I hear you. But no, that's very clever. But yeah, follow Tyler on Twitter. Listen to Father Material. And uh, check out GildenMedia.com. There's all kinds of projects there. And so if you're looking for to collaborate, let them know. I uh, hope you've had a lot of fun. This has been great. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Like I said, it's a great podcast. I, I have a lot of fun listening. You guys, uh, you, you don't take yourselves too seriously, but uh, but you do take but you do take it seriously. You're the perfect combination <laughs> of not so serious but serious, and 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 that's probably like should be your tagline somewhere. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll uh, yeah. So I really I really do enjoy it. And uh, no, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate yeah. it. Seriously, unserious. I guess we'll call ourselves. Uh, Michael Leboff, where can everybody find you on Twitter? Uh, the Big Lebowski with two E's. Follow Mike on Twitter at the Big Lebowski. Read and listen to his work at Action Network. Any final thoughts on Peter Regan 
and his 44 completely worthless games as a New York Islander or his trade to Chicago, which has going to, is going to haunt the Islanders now for the rest of all of our lives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a, uh, an episode that I thought was pretty straightforward when we had started to arrange it with Tyler, Peter Regan, pretty easy to make jokes about his 44 game <laughs> Islander career. But they're not funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's a good way to put it. It's not. It used to be funny. Now it's not funny. It's not funny anymore. Could, could you imagine if Igor Shesterkin's number was forty four? Like if, if, he, <laughs> oh, if like if if, if he just knew and he just played uh, homage to that. Oh man, oh. he's taunting us. But I mean, if if he's anything like his buddy Sorokin. Sorokin he doesn't care. He doesn't know what Peter Regan is, and he don't care. Uh, but we care, and like you said, we we take this very seriously. And yeah, this is going to be a problem now, but uh, we'll work through this together. Uh, we promise. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Sign up at patreoncom anxiety for after the episodes and bonus content. Follow us on Twitter at Isles Anxiety Pod. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and at Spotify. Our theme music is Knuckles by Bjorn Falk. Listen to more of Bjorn's music on Bandcamp and also at Spotify. And a reminder that our first ever live event will be Saturday, March 30th at 4 p.m. at the beautiful brand new Offsite Tavern in New York City. Around 4.45 or so, we'll start to record a live podcast that will be all about your Weird Islander stories. So bring your Weird Islanders jerseys, t-shirts, swag, whatever you got, because we want to hear about it. That is Saturday, March 30th at Offside Tavern. Be there. It's going to be a great time. Read Lighthouse Hockey every single day. Islanders Anxiety Podcast are part of the Fans First Sports Network. Find more at fansfirstsports.com, shop vintageicehockey.com, try wines in the Pinot Project. We will talk to you again in a few weeks with another weird Islander. And until then, keep the Islanders weird. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.